mark tropical outlook for 2014 hurricane season. Let's take a look at what we've got going on. Here are the 2014 names across the Atlantic, Caribbean, and Gulf of Mexico basin. We cycle through these every, say, six to seven years here, and pretty much some of these are new because they've been retired, but... Uh, Hopefully we don't get too, down too far through the list here and I'll explain why. Eastern Pacific, very active, very active start. However, the Atlantic Basin is going to be affected by El Nino. Let's take a look at those particulars I'm expecting here. I'm expecting about six to eight named storms here of which three could become hurricanes and I'm only expecting one major hurricane, Category 3 or higher. Keep in mind, last year, 2013, we did not see any major hurricanes. So this may be a long shot to even get a major hurricane during an El Nino year, especially if this is going to be a very active El Nino year. And I'll explain why. If we take a look at the particulars of El Nino, of course, El Nino forms off the coast, the west coast of South America, off the coast of uh, Chile and the Latin American countries. And of course, it's characterized by anywhere from a one to three degree temperature departure from average above normal on the sea surface temperatures of the Pacific Ocean. Now, if you put that in perspective, that is a light to moderate El Nino. However, there are indications, especially just the waters below the surface of the eastern, or yes, the eastern Pacific, we are basically looking at sea surface temperatures almost five to six degrees above normal. Now, if that makes it to the surface, say the middle to latter portion of the summer, we could be looking at a major El Nino, something we have not seen since late 1998, especially across North America. So this could be an El Nino for the record books. And putting that in perspective, what does that mean for tropical development? Well, if we take a look at the basin across the Atlantic, and especially the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, now the Eastern Pacific, you get a lot of storms during something like this in El Nino. You don't have a lot of wind shear. But across the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico here, you basically have a lot of wind shear coming off the uh, Mexican coast here, and it extends up towards the Caribbean islands here. And pretty much loops out here towards the Atlantic. So this could be a problem for tropical development across much of the Atlantic, Caribbean, and Gulf of Mexico basin. So that's what we're going to be looking for. A possibility of any of these storms that form could really be battling a lot of vertical wind shear in the uh, atmosphere here. And this could inhibit major storms from developing. Now, it's not to say that just because we're expecting a below normal season, it doesn't mean that we won't have one major blockbuster storm. Because if we look at 1992, Hurricane Andrew basically was the only storm for the entire year for the most part, and look what that did. So don't discount this season just because I'm expecting below average, and pretty much everybody is expecting below average. I was looking, of course, at the officials, and I'm even a little tad more conservative than the officials to say the least so we're going to take a look at that as well of course i think the biggest area that could develop into tropical systems will be the atlantic simply because they will be further away from the vertical wind shear that's not to say vertical wind shear won't be existent in the atlantic but it will be more prevalent across the caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. Now, if we take a look at sea surface temperatures, departure from average, if you look at the Atlantic Basin, Caribbean, and Gulf of Mexico here, I am not really impressed with these sea surface temperatures. They're acting well below normal pretty much for the entire basin, Atlantic, Caribbean, and Gulf of Mexico. So that is not good for tropical development, to say the least. So unless we start to get some major warming going on, we had a very big winter across the northern hemisphere, especially across northern or North America here. And of course, a lot of that cold icebergs, ice, whatnot, really made its way down further south. So we're starting to see some of those effects, and it is a delayed effect across the Atlantic. So that's what we're going to be looking at for the 2014 hurricane season, I'm expecting. And of course, I'll do another update on the local outlook across the tropics, uh, basically throughout the season. And I will keep you up to date on the tropics here at Media Mark.